first off, I want to take a chance to welcome everyone who's here. I know we have a lot of out-of-towners visiting, and so big warm welcome to all of you who are visiting. Hope you're having a wonderful time. I too came here as a tourist and ended up staying, so you know maybe some of you will face the same fate. But without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay. So again, we're talking about coiltech.net, which as Leon and Mr. Kim just mentioned, is a collaboration effort on behalf of the Korean Embassy to further the goals of joint partnerships and collaboration between Israeli and Korean companies in various high-tech sectors. Uh, there are a number of different objectives. The long-term objective, would, which uh, the ambassador will speak further about longer, is engendering this idea of creative economy, but our part to furthering this goal is creating a knowledge base for people to understand the lay of the land in different sectors so that there is a, gr a greater sense of understanding in terms of developing a path forward in terms of cooperative opportunity, okay? And all, when, as we look at the map, we'll get a sense of just how that'll function. Again, as Leon mentioned, there are a number of different stakeholders who became interested in this project and uh, have supported it, which is great, and I think it just goes to show you uh, the people who understand the potential that the, a project like this holds in terms of engendering cooperation. Um, as Leon mentioned, we have been started mapping specific high-tech industries. So the first project we worked in cooperation with the Korean Embassy on was uh, f focusing on the biomed field. So we mapped over 1,350 companies across both Israel and Korea uh, who are working in this sector. Now, today, we're going to talk about mapping the alternative energy sector, so companies in both Israel and Korea who are active in this, in this field of alternative energy, if you will. Um, and actually, these bilateral mapping projects are quite popular for embassies and international organizations. Our company alone has done a number of different projects, including with the Canadian embassy, mapping brain science researchers, working with the Chinese government to map water innovation technologies. So these projects are actually a popular, uh, we found to be popular and really useful way for embassies to go about promoting their bilateral cooperation goals. So first off, I want to give you guys a sense a little bit about who we are and what we brought to the table in terms of our partnership. Uh, Signals Intelligence Group is a company that's actually based around 20 minutes north of here in Netanya, Israel. We've been around in, since 2008 and have completed a number of these uh, mapping projects in that time. Actually, today our offering is a little more advanced. I'll get into that in a minute. But like so many Israeli companies, we are Israeli startups that are successful, as I'm sure you guys who are traveling know. Our founders are based, are veterans of the Israeli military intelligence uh, community, if you will. And our company is based on the idea of applying these comprehensive research and data structuring techniques that were used in the military and applying them to modern day economic or business challenges. So before we begin, I want to give you guys a little bit of a sense of uh, our approach to projects like this and how we go about collecting this information, if that makes sense. So the first, I'm starting up in the, the top middle of the circle here. And so the first thing that we really want to look at is what do we need to know? What's going to guide our search, OK? And so as I mentioned, we have an idea of what we want to figure out here. And then we have to go about figuring out how to find it. So I think we all know that just a simple Google search isn't comprehensive enough to get us the type of information we need in order to meaningfully present a project like this or meaningfully present different industries. So our company specializes in a number of advanced data mining technologies where we are able to comb the open web, everything that's publicly available to collect uh, information on companies, their specialties, and organize them for a project like this, therefore giving us the most comprehensive results possible. Uh, more than what any one individual can do through their own research. 
So another second of introduction, I want to talk to you about the benefits of ecosystem landscaping. Dr. Kim mentioned that he was really interested in understanding the ecosystem of the high tech, of the high tech sectors while he was here. And the idea of an ecosystem greater than just, say, a segment of a, of a, of a particular industry is that we're focusing across the value chain of an entire segment, okay? So you'll see when we get into the map that we're not just looking at the biggest or the most successful Israeli companies or the biggest or most successful Korean companies. We're looking at specific technologies and smaller companies so we understand where are people concentrating their research, where have they been successful in terms of bringing technologies and companies to commercialization, so, and so on and so forth. So we have a strong understanding of the entire value chain of a particular industry, which is why it's, we call it an ecosystem rather than just a segment or a sub-segment of a particular uh, market, if you will. So this is a, a brief outline outlining the objectives of our project, if that makes sense. So we're starting with the breadth. What do we want to know? We want to have an understanding of the alternative energy companies in Israel and in Korea, correct? So we scope the taxonomy accordingly. Uh, Leon actually was the energy advisor to the embassy. He was, knew what he wanted, which helped, but we divided into four different segments that we're looking at. Companies operating in heat, power, transport, energy efficiency, and smart grid, okay? So these are the four major segments of companies that are working in these fields that we're focusing on, okay? Uh, within that, within each field, obviously we break each company down into different more granular sub-segments, so we have a better sense of what they're actually doing and what they're actually producing. But these are the four big pillars that we use to filter companies based off of. And these are the four pillars that we used in terms of guiding our search when we went about gathering the data, uh, gathering the data and gathering the companies to use for this map, okay? So as you can tell, our final number of Korean companies for this map is not yet finalized. After we collect and structure and visualize all the data, we go back through and we have a team that validates it to make sure that nothing got in that is not appropriate and not relevant and not meeting the specifications. So we're still in the process of the human validation. So our final number will come clear in the next few weeks. However, you get a sense of how many companies we're looking at, the subsegments, et cetera. In addition to the scope of this taxonomy, we're also interested in learning, using this map to learn something from when we use it. So included in this map, for every company that's mapped, we, they're broken down by stage of development. So as I mentioned, whether it's an early stage technology or an early stage company, um, whether it, it comes with a size of employees, so we get a sense of the size, whether they're working internationally, whether they're working only in their local country, uh, data founding, all of these, parameters give us a sense of who the company is just from without even leaving the knowledge portal, without even leaving the map, okay? And of course, we also include all contact information to make it accessible to the user, okay? So without further ado, let's jump into the portal. As you guys can see, what this is is a public website or will be a public website uh, that people can access in terms of uh, discovering information about both of these economies, okay? So you can see here we referenced before that we've done two projects, a biomed mapping project and an alternative energy project. Both of them are here in the portal, but we're here to talk about alternative energy, so that's the map we'll focus on. Okay. So this, what we're looking at now is we're looking at the first layer of the map, okay? So this is the top layer where you get a sense of how you're going to move throughout it. So again, you'll see here that there are the four segments, it's this, we're already divided into the four different segments that scoped our taxonomy. We have heat, transport, smart grid and energy efficiency, and power. 
At this point in time, you already get a sense of where companies are concentrating. For example, power is the most popular segment and that there's the greatest volume of companies in both Israel and Korea who are working there. So let's see what's going on in here. When we click on power, we enter this layer of the map, if you will. So here we get a sense of all of the different sub-segments that we have under this one large field of power, okay? And we also get a sense of uh, the maturity and the distribution of these fields through this layer of the map. So for example, one interesting, one interesting observation is that we see that solar photovoltaics actually has, above, has a number of companies, whereas hydro is a less popular field in surely in terms of volume, okay? So let's check out what's going on in solar photovoltaics. So here we're in the sub-segment layer of the map, okay? Uh, what this means is that we're, we've narrowed down to a particular segment, and now we're at the point where we start to see the actual individual companies that have shown up through this project and have shown up on this map, okay? Even at this point in time, we're able to make some interesting observations about the industry. So for example, when we're looking at initial revenue, these are nearly all Korean companies, companies that are working in the, the solar photovoltaic space and have already been commercialized, already are gaining uh, initial revenue. There's not a, I, I, of course, we still have to validate the information, but for example, we're not looking at a single Israeli company here, which is pretty interesting. However, if we look in the R and if we look at companies that are still in the research and development stage or dealing with early stage technologies, we see that actually Israeli companies dominate in this space and that they're the ones who we don't see any Korean companies that are working in this space. So even from this layer of the map, without entering into a cert a particular company at all we start to get some interesting takeaways about the lay of the land of a particular industry and sub-segment. So let's check out what happens when we're interested in a particular company. So here we go, here's a Korean company called Solar Fusion, where the, and they are manufacturers of solar panels. And just from looking at this scorecard that pops up, we get a sense of not only the company name, but we have a description here that already clues us into the company's uh, competitive advantage and selling point, which is that they're using uh, particularly innovative techniques in terms of building the solar panels instead of glass. Uh, and then as we scroll down, we see the other parameters we are interested in. So when they were founded, the employee size, we're given a link to the website. And then when we click on contact, here we are given all of the information of this company right at our fingertips, okay? This is, in, the idea behind this is that whoever is looking at the map, we want to make it as feasible and accessible as possible for them to take action immediately, okay? So this is one Korean company. We'll look at uh, an Israeli company, Solar Ore. So again, immediately we see the same thing. We get a sense of the company description. This is a company that's focusing on building panels specifically for commercial buildings. Uh, we also get a sense of the size, another small company founded in 2007. And so this is another interesting example. Okay, the company was founded in 2007. It's still in the R&D phase. This tells us something, that this might be a good company to partner with in terms of research opportunities, but maybe it's not the best partner if you're looking to bring a type of technology like this into the commercialization stage, okay? So that's one way of using the map, is clicking through, doing some exploration. Another way to use the map is we can use free search, okay? So at this point, since the project is still in development, we don't have a keyword search yet, but this is something that we'll have. So if you're in, interested in a particular material or a particularly particular technology, you'll be able to search and see which company, either Korean or Israeli, is working in this space, okay? So look, EvoFuel, here's a company that we can do a free search on, and it shows up in the map, okay? So here we're in the biofuels layer, and we're looking at 
early stage biofuel companies, Evo Fuel shows up. And again, we're able to, excuse me, validate a scorecard. Okay. Now, what happens if you search your company and you think that you meet these qualifications and, but you're not showing up on the map? This is also part of the idea of coiltech.net is we want this to continue to be a, uh, an updated and live real-time understanding of both of these industries. So this is why we, that, that I know that the embassy intends to share this publicly is that any company who's not already on this map is able to submit their company to the map, okay, and request, and if, it's, if a company meets the requirements or the scope of our project, they're added. We also are able to do real-time monitoring and updates automatically of the map as companies that meet the standards uh, appear on the open web, if that makes sense. So, uh, again, to, to make this as feasible and practical as possible, obviously we need to put this in Korean as well. So the portal, although the alternative energy portal has not yet been translated, um, here you see the biomed portal in Korean. I know many of you out here can read this much more clearly than I stand a chance of. And, and I, so I hope you're enjoying, it makes sense to you. But um, this is the idea is that all of these maps will eventually be trans, the alternative energy map will also be translated into Korean. Therefore, it will encourage people, not just English speakers, but real Israelis, real Koreans to use this map, have it feel accessible, have it feel comfortable, okay? And uh, get us the cooperation and the opportunities that we're looking for. So I'm looking forward to hearing, uh, now, excuse me, now that we have all of the maps arranged, we're in a position that we can have a, we have a strong understanding of potential partnerships, potential collaborations. Again, we can, we, from a map like this, we learn where are certain, where are companies concentrating their efforts? Where is investment being concentrated, okay? Where, which technologies are being used by particular companies? Are there specific remote, strange, early stage technologies that only one or two companies are working on? Now they have a way to find one another and to partner, okay? So this is the idea, in addition to a wide range of other uses for it, such as the Israel, uh, the Israel Invest Fund and the Korean Israeli Investment Fund and all of these different opportunities can use these maps to further their goals, okay? Uh, I'm gonna let, obviously, the ambassador and. Uh, Mr. Yoav Shalush speak more about how to put something like this into practice, but this gives us a strong foundation to build on in terms of furthering these goals of bilateral cooperation, uh, partnership, and moving forward, hopefully a prosperous economic joint future for both countries. So thank you very much. <laughs> You have uh, the same uh, map uh, in the fields of uh, mobile telecom and cyber security? Uh, well, they're definitely possible to create. We haven't made them yet. So basically any industry can be mapped. We can do this for nearly any industry and nearly any any country, any set of countries. So this isn't a point that we're at yet, but if this is a project of interest to someone, of course we're going to, this is a, would provide the same value within that field. What's your sources of data? I mean, where do you get the data from? How do you know that the data is good? The data comes from a wide variety of sources, okay? So when I said, when I made the comment earlier about the Google search, obviously we do use the open web in terms of what people use, but the data also comes from, for example, this project, a number of different company databases, uh, trade office databases, in addition to industry journals, in addition to different industry websites, obviously, obviously the company websites themselves. And the idea is that we layer all of this data and we make it in order to validate it. So for example, if there's a company website 
but there's no other information on it. In a trade database, we can't find anything in terms of, they say they're exporting, but there's no export records of it, for example. Then this comes up as a red flag. So all of the data sources we use are cross-validated, and then in addition, it, it, and that's automatic. So that's part of what the technology does is the cross-validation uh, of the data from the different sources. In addition to that, as a company, Part of our value proposition is that we have every single entity on a map validated by a human as well. So after the process of the automation, automated validation, we go through a phase of having an analyst check and review, making sure that everything fits the proper specifications. What do you think is needed at this point of, in your project? what's needed is to go through the validation stage. Um, this is the final stage, and I know also as part of the partnership, we're gonna be printing large-scale PDFs of these maps as well, which will be shared, I believe, in the Korean embassy, if not other places, uh, so that, first of all, to make people, the visualization effect is powerful, so to make people really recognize that when you're standing up next to a large-scale map, you're looking at it, right? Um, the second thing that's necessary is, to, I, I hope to continue more projects like this, uh, to continue this, is uh, moving forward with these sorts of projects in order to further this goal. Okay, great, thank you guys so much. It was a great to come and speak to you today.